Back in 1997, Subaru introduced the Forester nameplate. It was the brand's first ever SUV. However, nearly 25 years ago, it was more like a lifted up station wagon as opposed to looking more like an SUV, like some of its early competitors. Now, obviously over the years, Subaru has made the Forester larger, more capable, more powerful. And for 2022, they're introducing a heavily revised Forester. In fact, it's so new, they're also introducing a new off-road oriented trim level called the Forester Wilderness. You can see I've got the vehicle right behind me. And to test out this new Forester Wilderness, I'm actually out here just outside of Bend, Oregon with beautiful Mount Jefferson in the background with the most off-road capable Forester ever. Because just like the Outback Wilderness, it's got more ground clearance, additional skid plates, all-terrain tires, and a unique look on the outside and inside. So the big question I want answered, has Subaru truly managed to make the Forester Wilderness the most capable Forester ever? Stay tuned to find out. So it's not every day that you get to film with such a beautiful backdrop, but it's very appropriate because here in Oregon, Subaru is one of the best-selling vehicles. A lot of people drive Subarus here, and it's pretty easy to see why. Now, in terms of the Forester, this is the company's best-selling model. It actually just outsold the Outback this year, and last year, Subaru did over 170,000 units. It is ahead of the Outback right now by about 10,000 units as of September 2021. So obviously, the Forester is a very important model for Subaru. You guys should be pretty familiar with this generation. It came out in 2000. 19. It's part of the fifth generation model. And this is really just a pretty heavy refresh. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the changes that Subaru made to the Forester as a whole. And of course, talk about the differences between the regular Forester and this Forester Wilderness. Now, obviously I've got two of them with me right now. This is the signature color that Subaru Wilderness is known for. This is called Geyser Blue. They essentially made this color by mixing a green and another color uh, together to make this Geyser Blue. It's a really nice color. I believe it was the World Rally Blue with the green that they mixed to get this color. Now, in terms of the front fascia, you can see it looks a lot more like like the Outback. You can see some family resemblance here at the front. If you stare at it from certain angles, you might confuse this for an Outback. You can see the headlights are the most obvious change for 2022. They have been significantly updated this year. You have that signature Hawkeye look to the headlight. You have an LED daytime running light. Full LED headlights with steering responsive adaptive headlights are actually standard on every trim level of the Forester for 2022. You can see the turn signal, signal is just an incandescent design. And then if you guys go for a um, touring trim and a wilderness trim, you're going to have LED fog lights. The other trims will just have an, a halogen fog light. The uh, wilderness trim also includes this unique hexagonal design to the actual fog light. It looks really nice along with additional cladding. In fact, the front bumper is entirely new for 2022. Uh, However, the wilderness also has its unique front bumper to help increase the off-road off capability. You can see the hexagonal grille with this kind of black plastic look, which helps it give a more off-road finish. And then you can see underneath here, a front engine skid plate is gonna be standard on every wilderness version of the Forester. You can also add in additional skid plates from the dealer which can add an extra 500 bucks for just the parts plus labor. That, of course, is going to give the Forester Wilderness the most off-road capability in the segment, at least in terms of you know, regular compact crossovers. Now, in terms of ground clearance, Subaru was able to increase the ground clearance to 9.2 inches, which makes this pretty high in the segment. Actually, it has more ground clearance than something like the Jeep Cherokee, which would be a direct competitor, the Cherokee Trail Trailhawk, to something like the Forester Wilderness. And you can see here, this particular one here is autumn green metallic. It's also a really great color choice. It goes well, of course, with the additional cladding. Now, in terms of the overall length, this is still about 182.7 inches long. Its wheelbase is actually a smidge shorter on the Wilderness. 104.9 versus 105.1. I'm not entirely sure where Subaru is kind of shortening that. You do have unique wheel arches here, which are enlarged to, again, give this more of an off-road rugged appearance to it. The wheels are unique to the wilderness. These are a nice five-spoke black finish, 17-inch wheel design. They're wrapped in Yokohama Geolander all-terrain tires. Now, for all-terrain tires from the factory, these are going to be fine, but I do think that there are times where I'm looking at this vehicle and I think the wheels are still too small. I want like a fatter, like a bigger all-terrain tire on this vehicle, which I imagine it's got the clearance for it. I wouldn't be surprised if some owners were putting some fatter tires on this vehicle to give it a little bit more of that off-roady look to it. Now, of course, you have the Subaru Wilderness badge here right underneath the side mirrors. The mirrors are also, they also have this, this LED turn signal indicator. They also have this unique texturized black plastic look. You see more of that uh, copper, anodized copper trim along the side that you also see on the front of the vehicle. And you can also see it here on the roof rails. The roof rails themselves have also been modified on the wilderness, just like the Outback Wilderness. Subaru says they push the width out of the 
or the mounting brackets of the roof rails by about 20 millimeters. That allowed them to increase the load capacity on the roof. So now this will hold a maximum of 220 pounds static, which is the highest in the segment, or 800 pounds um, I'm sorry, 220 pounds dynamic, 800 pounds static, which means you could put a tent up here and you could theoretically put three people up in that tent because 800 pounds is a lot of weight. It's about 100 pounds more versus the standard version of the uh, Forester. And you can see here the overall shape hasn't changed. This is just a, a very heavy refresh. When you look at the rear of the new Forester, you can see the taillights have like an LED combination to them. They still have this interesting kind of claw shape to them where it almost looks like a claw of a crab or something like that. It's a LED combination, so you can see the turn signals are just incandescent. Same with the reverse lights. You also have black badging here that comes standard on the Wilderness model, along with the Wilderness badge. The rear bumper is also unique on the Wilderness. There's still a chrome exhaust tip. This, of course, is going to be great for durability. If you guys plan to actually take this vehicle off-road, you don't have these painted pieces that you have to worry about that's gonna get scratched. And you can see here more black plastic with a texturized look along the module or along this piece here that connects the taillights together. And then in terms of the cargo area, the Wilderness is available with a power lift gate. It is part of an option package for $1,800 that throws in the Harman Kardon stereo. And the cool thing about the Wilderness is you still get all of the cargo capacity as the regular ones. Subaru says you get around 27 cubic feet of space. This is one of the largest openings that I've seen in the segment. And it does offer up a large opening. If you want to fold down the rear seats, you can see there's actually a little button here that you can push, which usually will throw the seat down. But when you do that, it actually expands the cargo to about 70 cubic feet. Now it is a little bit less because of that panel roof. If you guys go for a base trim of the Forester, all premiums and up will have that panel roof. You'll actually get 76 cubic feet of space. The other cool thing about the Wilderness model is you get some nice touches. You have an LED light right here that helps with lighting up the area here if you guys are coming back from a trail and it's dark. And then in addition to all the rubberized padding you get, the Wilderness model also gives you not the not this, this is actually part of the off-road drive. It gives you a full-size spare tire with a matching wheel that includes a TPMS monitor, a sensor in it. So that's something that you really want when you're off-roading. So it's a great car that Subaru didn't actually hamper any of the practicality just by going with this off-roady version. All right, so now that we've talked about the exterior changes for 2022, let's hop into the interior of the wilderness. You can see, I hope you guys like gray because this is the only interior color combination that you can get. This is, of course, their StarTex, which is a waterproof material. It also feels very durable. I like the feel of it. It's soft and comfortable. It has this really interesting hexagonal pattern. And you also get uh, two-level heated seats, although if you're looking for cooled seats, I'm sad to report that Subaru does not offer it on the Forester. You have to step it up to an Outback. And then the driver's seat, you can see, is an eight-way power with a two-person um, or with a two-way lumbar support, which is definitely nice. And then when I shut the door, the door has a relatively solid sounding thunk. If you're looking for memory seats, it also isn't available with memory seats. That's something, again, you have to step it up to the touring trim. Now, here's the key fob for the vehicle. You can see it's the standard Subaru key. If you guys go for the premium trims and up, it'll have their smart key access system, which is nice. Subaru used to kind of limit that on the higher trims, but not anymore with these newer models. You can see starting the vehicle up, you can see the overall dash layout hasn't really changed. This is where I think Subaru could have updated it. I would have liked to see them offer the 11.9 inch touchscreen that you find in the Outback. Sadly, we just have the eight inch touchscreen display here, which again is perfectly fine, but it still uses again, a wired connection for Android Auto and CarPlay. So at least it has that, but the graphics, they're getting a little bit dated. So Subaru is a little behind in the infotainment tech uh, for this vehicle. Some of the competitors definitely offer it better. The instrument panel you can see here has some unique wilderness touches. You can see you've got the copper accents here for the gauges. There's a wilderness badge back here, more copper on the steering wheel, on the shifter, and on the drive mode selector for the X mode system. The steering wheel itself has a manual tilt and telescoping design. It has a good amount of adjustability. I can kind of get comfortable in this vehicle uh, really well. And in terms of the materials, they're pretty solid for the segment. You can see this area right here is a soft touch injection molded plastic, more stitching and padded areas right here for the armrest. Windows are one touch auto up and down for both the fronts and the rear is not one touch down or up. So I'm sad that they didn't at least make it that. Um, the dashboard you can see has a soft touch injection molded plastic with some stitching here, although this is definitely a fake stitching, but it has really nice contrast stitching with more of that hexagonal pattern. It's even slightly padded over here over the instrument panel hood. This is a very conventional look to the interior, and I kind of wish Subaru would offer a little bit more in terms of color options, but you can go to a different trim of the Forester where you can get real leather if you guys want something like that. You have some black or gray painted plastic over here, which really isn't fooling anybody. 
Uh, this is like a piano black plastic area. There's a traditional shifter here for the CVT. Put the vehicle in reverse. You can see there's your standard backup camera. Subaru does not offer a full 360 camera, but what the Wilderness comes standard with is the front camera system. So you can see there, I put it into drive or push a button down here. It gives you a 180 degree view of what's in front of you. It's fine, but I'm kind of like, why didn't you put this over here, Subaru, in this screen right here, or at least offer a full 360 camera. There's no Subaru vehicle that has a full 360 camera. I really want them to consider offering that on their next generation of vehicles. Now, over here on the infotainment system, I'm gonna briefly just you know touch base on this. It's got the embedded GPS, because my tester has the option package for it for like $1,800. You can see this is like a TomTom-based navigation system. It's perfectly fine. It's gotten better over the years. It, tries to work like a tablet and whatnot. You can swipe, you can pinch, you can zoom. Um, it's relatively okay in the speediness, but most people are gonna, again, just use the Apple CarPlay function, which is you know, what most people end up doing anyways. Uh, this does not have things like over-the-air updates. It's, again, right there, it's kind of a little bit slow, kind of laggy when it first starts. I think Subaru is probably working on their new on a new infotainment system, but this is going to be fine for most people, especially if you're coming from another Subaru. You can see there's dual zone automatic climate control over here, uh, which is nice. It's got traditional knobs and buttons. You can see volume knob, tuning knob. Um, down here, you can see my iPhone 12 Pro Max does not fit in this area. So this is a kind of a small area for a phone. There's no wireless phone charging pad, which would have been nice to add. Um, a lot of more piano black plastic trim here. You have an electronic parking brake. Your drive mode selector is right here, although this is technically your X mode drive mode selector. There's dual mode X mode in this vehicle. If I kick it over to the left here, you can see it goes into a snow dirt. Kick it over to the right, it goes into a deep snow and mud, which is again, new and part of the dual mode, X mode, push it in to go to normal. There's also another drive mode selector button right here where you can go into sport sharp for the transmission program and then intelligent, which is kind of like the normal mode. So just two different drive modes here. There's paddles on the wheel. It's all pretty much what you expect from a lot of other Subaru products. The armrest right here you can see is nice and padded. Open this up. It's relatively deep. There is no USB ports in here. There's actually two USB ports down in this little cubby over here, um, along with your two level heated seats. And then above me you can see big panoramic sunroof, which definitely lets in a lot of light. Um, Subaru says this is tint, this reduces the UV in, or light penetration by 95%, but it doesn't really look tinted to me. It actually looks very bright. So let me know in the comments below if you think Subaru actually tints this. There is LED lighting in here, which is definitely nice. A lot of Subarus have been skimping on that and giving us just incandescent bulbs. Uh, and then when you open up the glove box here, you can see it's a bin style. It's not damped or lined with felt, but it has a pretty good amount of space. So overall, the cabin has most of the features that you expect. It's definitely a lot more conventional, very rugged as well. Uh, and my tester has the $1,800 option, option for the Harman Kardon stereo, which you can't even get in the Outback Wilderness, the GPS, and then the power rear liftgate. Now, Subarus are very popular family vehicles, and it's pretty easy to see why. When you hop into the back seat of the Forester, this has one of the roomiest back seats in the segment. In fact, Subaru says the legroom back here is 39 and a half inches, which is the same as the Outback, their larger vehicle. And this has one of the highest in the segment. Uh, the floor here you can see isn't completely flat, but you can easily fit three people across. There is a slight hump here. You do have rear seat air vents. You can see there's two USB ports back here. No heated rear seats. That looks like there's something that you could option in on the touring grade, which you cannot get on the uh, Wilderness version. And you can see here there's dual level uh, storage pockets in each of the seat backs. You could easily put a cell phone over here. In terms of the materials, this is hard touch plastic, but there's still some soft uh, soft touch materials here on the actual armrest pad. Window controls feel good. You have a chrome uh, accented door handle here and more of that copper stitching. In terms of the seats back here, you can see they actually are pretty comfortable for me. I'm five foot seven. With this much legroom, I could easily get comfortable. This is still the same StarTex waterproof interior, which is gonna be great if you guys plan to get this vehicle dirty. Um, there is also an armrest here that folds down gives you two cup holders. And then some competitors offer a rear seat that actually folds or that reclines. Sadly, Subaru does not, but you can easily recline these rear seats. And you can see this one also has the uh, weatherproof rear seat backs. So if you're wondering what's underneath the hood of the refreshed Forester, this is where you're going to be a tad disappointed because Subaru did not make any changes to the actual engine. You still only get one engine choice here in America. And it's a pretty decent engine choice in the segment. It's a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated direct injection boxer flat four cylinder engine. Remember this is a flat four, it's not an inline four. That's Subaru's always been known for their boxer engines. And the output hasn't changed. 182 horsepower and 176 pound feet of torque. This is like 12 more horsepower versus the previous generation, but we've seen this engine in Subaru Forester since 2019. The difference of course, 
case has to do with the transmission. The Wilderness model gets its own unique transmission. It's still a linear Tronic CVT. However, Subaru has revised the final drive ratio, so it's a lot lower, and that's essentially going to give us more a low end torque when you first hit the throttle. Subaru says you should expect about a 20%, 25% improvement in low end torque delivery. And the Wilderness model is the only one that gets an eight speed manual, manual shift mode within the paddle shifters. All the other models have a seven speed. So this model should theoretically be the quickest, quickest accelerating uh, Forester in the lineup, although Subaru doesn't disclose zero to 60 times. We'll talk about that later on in the driving scene. Now, of course, fuel economy is where this does take a hit because it's got that revised CVT and the off-road tires and whatnot. This is rated to get 25 in the city, 28 on the highway. That is a pretty significant drop from the 26.33 that you get in something like the Forester Limited or the Forester Premium or the Forester Touring. The cool thing about this updated transmission, which has a new transmission cooler, this will tow a maximum of 3,000 pounds. So that's about 1,500 more than the standard Forester. So that's double the towing capacity. Uh, and uh, in terms of the curb weight, Subaru says this Wilderness model isn't really that much heavier. As this one sits, it weighs in at just over 3,600 pounds. All right, so we are in Bend, Oregon, and for the driving scene of the 2022 Forester, I'm gonna start out on the road of this Wilderness model. Now, the first thing I do wanna mention, we are a little bit at elevation here. We're about 3,200 feet, so that will affect the acceleration just a little bit, but because this vehicle has that new transmission with the revised lower gear ratio, Subaru says that this car should be quicker off the line. Now, they didn't announce any numbers, but I brought my zero to 60 timing equipment, so I do wanna test out and see what we can get numbers-wise, because the old Forester, was a little bit of a dog. <laughs> it's still going. <laughs> All right, there we go. 9.2 seconds. Now, that is definitely slow, but I believe the old Forester with the older CVT was 9.6 seconds. So that is a slight improvement. And also keep in mind, the extra elevation here is gonna affect the performance a little bit. And I have my editor with me, who's apparently very, very fat, and he's probably slowing us down by a lot. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I'll retest this when I have this back home for a week um, at sea level, and we'll see if we can beat that. I think this car could potentially do under eight, under nine seconds. Um, when, when we're not at elevation, it's just one person in the car. And, and it honestly has decent acceleration in just everyday driving. Um, Subarus in general, they've done a really good job with tuning their CVTs, like put my foot down here. This has the revised ratios. It also has a sport sharp mode, which I have it in right now. It also has a manual mode here, mode, because it's all software. Uh, this transmission offers eight virtual ratios. So if you start pulling the paddle, it actually does rev match pretty well. Put your foot down, the engine, drones like a four cylinder. Remember this doesn't have a turbo. So this is significantly slower than an Outback Wilderness. That's one reason why you're gonna buy the Outback. The Outback has the turbo with 260 horsepower, way more than the 182 and significantly more torque. So I would like Subaru to consider offering the Forester with the turbo again, but it's all at a price point because this should be plenty of acceleration for most people. And this vehicle is $5,000 less expensive than the Outback. So that's obviously going to be a huge selling factor. Now, just driving the vehicle normally, let's put it into its intelligent mode here. This is gonna put the CVT back into a more economy-minded setting. Um, now, obviously you don't buy the Wilderness model because you want the best gas mileage and I'll retest the gas miles when we have it for a week. But the Forester is still a really darn easy car to drive. Visibility is among the best in the segment with all this big glass everywhere. It actually lets in a ton of light. You can see everywhere around you. You have Subaru's EyeSight, which is standard, but this model here has the blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert. It has the evasive um, emergency automatic steering assist, which is a new addition this year. And this is now in its fourth generation of EyeSight, and it works pretty well. It still beeps like bloody murder every time you cross the line. And uh, this one is also missing the driver focus feature, which you can get in the touring model, which watches your face. And if you're not paying attention or you're on your phone or if you're falling asleep, the car will know. This model, however, does not offer it. But in terms of the ride quality, let's talk about that because this has a revised suspension and it's got meatier tires. Now, um, Subaru says the, gra the ground clearance came from suspension revisions and not just spacers. That's what owners tend to do when they lift it up. And the ride quality is still nice. This is a very comfortable and soft ride quality. It's not sporty by any means, but the steering is relatively quick but you're gonna buy, you know, I would suggest looking at the Forester Sport if you want a little bit more engagement or looking at a Mazda CX-5. You buy this because it's a daily driver, because you wanna go take it on adventures and, and travel a little further off the beaten path. 
Um, but the seats are pretty comfortable. I do like this StarTex material in this model that really um, is waterproof. It's great for somebody who's going to be using this vehicle uh, for the, its intended function. Uh, and overall, I have very little complaints. It's a little bit of a not so memorable driving experience on the road. Uh, and I do hear a little more wind noise than I would like. Uh, there's also a little more road noise, I believe, than the last Forester. You can again blame those tires. But other than that, it's a really comfortable daily driver um, that really doesn't have any compromises. It's just like that, the Outback Wilderness. Subaru wanted to make sure that you could drive this thing out on the road. The eyesight function works just as well uh, as without the lift kit or whatnot. Uh, and it's designed to be able to be used as a daily driver and take it a little further off the beaten path. Speaking of which, we are heading to an off-road park here in Bend, Oregon. So uh, let's go ahead and queue over to the off-road driving scene because this is what the Forester Wilderness was made. This is supposed to be the most capable Forester that the company's ever produced. All right, so now we are taking the Wilderness Forester off-road, and this is the whole reason why Subaru built the Wilderness to take this vehicle off the beaten path or further off the beaten path. And we're starting out this portion here going up this rather steep hill that's over sand. We're going up a 12, 13% incline right now, 14%. I've got a spotter there helping me. And uh, yeah, 20% grade now. This is actually pretty steep. I imagine a lot of owners may not even do something like this. But you know what? This is where you really notice the revised CVT ratio. You notice the ground clearance. You notice the all-terrain tires. Okay, you can feel the all-wheel drives appropriating the power. All right, and then turn the wheel this way now. Thanks. Very impressive. Remember, this is a Subaru Forester. This is a car that's built off of the global platform that also underpins the Impreza and a legacy. Like, it's a car vehicle. It's, this is not an off-road type of vehicle with body on frames or live axles. I mean, obviously, Subaru is quick to point out that the wilderness models aren't Jeeps. They're not gonna go into Moab and do some serious rock crawling, but they do claim that a lot of Forester owners, over 70%, say that they take their vehicles off-roading. Now, off-roading is a, a relative term because some people would consider just a gravel road off-roading, while as the pure Jeep guys would say, no, 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 that's not off-roading, that's just literally a gravel road. But this is still not on paved pavement, and realistically, a lot of buyers who, who drive a crossover like this are most likely going to be driving in these kind of conditions as they want to do more outdoorsy things. But this is just the first part of our off-road test. We're gonna try out another area later on in this video, but here we go again. We're gonna test out the ground clearance here, test out the skid plates, test out these tires as we go up this hill, which seriously, I don't think most owners would do this. <laughs> so there is a front camera on this vehicle. We push that button here. It gives you a small 180 degree view of the front, what's in front of me, because I can't see anything. And this is also an area where the hood graphic also is, does a great job of not having the sunlight reflect back into my face as I go up into the sky. <laughs> now I do have the dual mode X mode in snow dirt in this, while I'm doing this. Wow, okay. Oh. <laughs> and this is where the, it has a, downhill assist control, so it's actually applying the brakes for me automatically. I'm not even hitting the brakes. So it's kind of like off-road cruise control. <laughs> this is pretty cool. And we're on a 22% descend right there. So we went up 21%, we went down 22%. So all very impressive. And the Forester Wilderness made it look easy. Now, I imagine most owners are probably not gonna do something like that, but it is pretty cool that the Forester can handle something like that. And it really shows off the capability of Subaru's all-wheel drive system, the revised CVT. And also, just as we go down you know, this dirt road again, you can really feel the suspension, the soft springs that I noticed out on the highway really translates to a smoother ride quality. Now, of course, this is not like amazingly smooth, but I mean, if we were in like a Jeep or a 4Runner, this would be a lot more bouncy. So clearly, the Forester Wilderness is a lot more capable than it needs to be, and I think that Subaru has a really interesting package here. So let's go into the more difficult off-road section later on in the video because I want to see uh, if we can actually put some of those skid plates to use. So we were looking for a little bit more of a challenging area to drive the uh, Forester Wilderness through, and I've got my camera guy, videographer, in the driver's seat now. Hopefully I don't fall, I'm trying to walk over here, but this road, it's always difficult to show how treacherous or challenging it is on camera, but we're gonna try to film and see if we can test out the ground clearance and test out those skid plates. 
Woo! <laughs> Don't hit me, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> so one of my favorite things to do when I'm off-roading is look for puddles to drive fast through. So we happen to found one right here and I'm going to try to stand as far away as I can from the vehicle when my camera guy or my, when my editor drives through it so I don't get splashed. <laughs> I thought it was far enough back, but it sort of got me. Yeah, I'm it got me a little bit right here, but. Oh no. <laughs> All right, so now we're coming up on this section here that you can kind of get it on an angle. We can test out the ground clearance. There's also a little bit of snow. And this is probably the conditions that most Subaru Outback Wilderness owners will want to put their vehicles through. She makes it look so easy. <laughs> All right, so we've been driving up the uh, mountain for a little bit. There are some snowy areas, but it's mostly just kind of ruts, rocks, and some pretty nice puddles. So before I go on to my final thoughts, I wanted to uh, film this car go through one last puddle. And this one actually happens to be a little bit more deep than the other ones. And I'm gonna try my best to not get splashed this time, although there are some pretty nice rocks in there. So hopefully my editor doesn't get a flat tire as we go through these. I'm gonna go far back this time to not get splashed. Oh God. <laughs> Don't kill me. <laughs> Literally almost fell again as I was going through this. You didn't get wet that time, did almost you? fell though, again. <laughs> so, yeah, as you can see, we're going through a little bit more of a snowier area here. And this is probably where a lot of Subaru owners are going to be driving this car in these kind of conditions. But uh, this has definitely been handling it really well. And uh, these uh, Yokohama Geolander all-terrain tires have been very, very uh, sticky, at least. Don't crash, Rob. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yes, there's 9.2 inches of ground clearance on this vehicle, but it's still not a Jeep. <laughs> um, but anyways, this is probably what more than what most owners are going to do. But I have to admit, I am uh, pretty impressed. This is a very fun vehicle straight out of the box to do some uh, adventure seeking with. <laughs> it's fun as hell. <laughs> <laughs> so as of September 2021, Subaru says they've sold a little over 132,000 Foresters here in America. So it's basically on pace to be the company's best-selling model again for the 2021 model year. So for 2022, Subaru has made some pretty extensive changes. While I only had a chance to drive the Wilderness model today, I should be driving a Touring or a Limited trim at a later date. I am pretty impressed with the overall package Subaru offers here. As you guys saw, it can easily be driven on the road and be a comfortable daily driver, but you can also take it off-road on areas that are going to be a little bit more challenging. I mean, obviously I think Forester owners or Subaru owners aren't going to be going to places where Jeeps take their vehicles and what not to go rock crawling. But what this vehicle competes really well against is something like the Toyota RAV4 TRD Off-Road and a Jeep Grand Cherokee, or Jeep Cherokee, I'm sorry, the Cherokee Trailhawk. And to be honest, I really like what Subaru offers here in terms of the package. The styling changes for 2022 
are nice, although I still think that Subaru put too small wheels and tires on the Wilderness model. I would have liked to see knobbier tires, bigger, wider tires. And there's still some instances of this car where I think it looks a little bit too much like an Outback. I want Subaru to kind of distinguish the models a little bit more, although it's going to kind of show people this is part of the Subaru family. I also really like the geyser blue and even the new colors that Subaru offers for 2022. There's like a new cascade green that you can get on the touring trim. That's probably the one that I would choose, but you can't get it on the Wilderness model. The interior also is full of most of the tech that we want, although it is a little bit dated. Really what makes the Forester so appealing is the fact that this vehicle is going to be something that's going to last you a long time and it's also a really good price because the 2022 model starts at $25,195 for the base premium. All-wheel drive, remember, is going to be standard. If you guys want to step it up to the premium model, so the base version is $25,000, the premium is about $3,000 more. That's around $28,000. You can also option in a couple of things on that model. The Wilderness version is going to start at around 32,600 plus destination, just under 34 grand. My tester here is right around 35,900, which has the $1,800 for the upgraded Harman Kardon stereo, the power liftgate, uh, and the embedded factory GPS. Now, of course, this is still going to be a little bit more expensive than some of its competitors, but it is about $5,000 less expensive than the Subaru Outback Wilderness, which the Outback does have a little bit nicer of interior and it has the turbo engine, which you sadly can't get on this vehicle. But in actuality, most people in this segment don't really care about straight line performance. And you're gonna find a lot to like with this car. So I think it's well-rounded, it's well-priced, it's going to be built well, it's going to last a long time. And it should also continue to be Subaru's best-selling model when the 2022 version goes on sale in December of this year. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2020 to Subaru Forester Wilderness. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video. Yes, I got it out of my shirt. Fuck. Fuck damn, that scared the shit out of me. I was like, what? It was that thing. Ew. What the hell? It was down my shirt, Rob. It was disgusting. <laughs> oh. Wilderness. That's so fun. Okay. God, I hate bugs.